Hi, this is Allison Sheridan of the NosillaCast podcast, hosted at podfeed.com. Technology Geek podcast with an ever so slight Apple bias. Today is Wednesday, July 10th, 2024, and this is show number 1001. Steve says I should call it the Dalmatian episode. Now, since this is coming out on a Wednesday, that means there's no live show this Sunday, the 14th, but we'll be back on schedule on July 21st. Now, this is the first week we'll be trying out this crazy idea of putting Chit Chat Across the Pond back into the NoSilicast with our new Podfeed family member, Adam Angst. Before we get stuck into the show, we have a submission from a listener. Hello, Allison. Tom Merritt, host of Daily Tech News Show here. And some people amongst the castaways may be thinking, Tom, you're a little late to congratulate Allison on her thousandth episode. And I have two things to say to that. Uh, one is that I think Allison would appreciate that I waited for her to successfully publish her thousandth episode before congratulating her. I mean, technically, a lot of folks were jumping the gun a little bit, congratulating. What if she'd never published it? What if she'd never done it? You know, so I think a stickler for the technicalities like Allison would appreciate that. But the second thing is more important. The second thing is I'm actually congratulating her on episode 1001. See, having done a thousand episodes of a podcast before, I understand that that thousand first can feel a little empty. Like, well, wait a minute. Am I, am I past my peak? Everybody was so excited for episode thousand. What about this one? Well, Allison, I, I think I speak on behalf of all the castaways when I say uh, we are just as excited for episode 1001 and 1002 and 1003 as we were for episode 1000. So belated congratulations. And number three, I also blame my new puppy, Sev. Okay, so I do appreciate that Tom is so precise that he waited until 1001. And uh, it's an indicator of how he can prove at any case he's never wrong. But I got to tell you, that puppy is a good excuse. Sev is an adorable puppy. All right, now we can get started with the show. Let's have a listen to another accessibility interview from the CSUN Accessible Tech Conference. I'm standing with the lovely Chris Toth from XR Navigation, and uh, this is an accessible map thing that we're going to be talking about today, right? So we have a built a technology that lets us make any kind of map on the internet accessible. It's really cool stuff. We've got... Right now, a demo here with a playground, but we can work with all kinds of maps from neighborhood maps, election maps, excuse me, all sorts of things. So how does, how does this work? What, what is it a, a visually impaired person would experience with your, your service? So right now, when you go see a map online and you have a screen reader, a lot of the times those maps will not at all be accessible. They'll be essentially a blank graphic. So what we've been able to do is we can kind of take the same data that powers those maps. It's usually in a format called GeoJSON. And we can pull that into our system and process it in such a way that we render it out in audio, 3D audio, so that you can understand the relationships and like the angles between objects and essentially understand exactly what an environment looks like before you would actually physically go there. So this helps with trip planning and all kinds of stuff. And like so, said, so by angles and stuff, are you saying like it'll say turn 30 degrees to the, to the north? or Exactly. Or not only that, but you can kind of literally explore the map on a one meter resolution so that you can sort of feel the uh, relationships between the things. So feel, I thought it was on a website. How am I going to feel it? When I say feel, I mean, so you're... Sense? It works with uh, headphones on, so you're going to be using the keyboard, and while you're using the keyboard, the audio is going to give... It's sort of like when you're going over a chessboard or something like that, and it would tell you, here's like this coordinate, and here's whatever is in that coordinate. Like, uh, for instance, if you're walking over grass, you'll hear the sound of grass or whatever. Oh my gosh, that's really cool. So when I say feel, it's it really allows you to... Uh, sense maybe yeah, yeah, it's a a audio word. but in audio in that yes. case right so if I just want to see uh, outside of this hotel how, how would I do that so you can literally just go to audium a-u-d-i-o-m dot net and you can put in the address of our hotel we just got a standard like address picker uh, widget on there and once you've done that you, it'll just pull it down from OpenStreetMap and you can directly get that information uh, and explore these maps Oh, that's crazy cool. Now, you've got a demo here. We're not sure how this is going to work. because I do have a small demo here, and I'm not sure if we can necessarily show it, but at least we can show the basics of it. Okay, um, so let me describe to the audio audience. Um, 
we're looking at a, at a picture of, uh, did you say it was a, a playground? Yes, yes, yes. And there's a giant speaker here that's going to start talking to us when you start pushing buttons, right? Correct. So when, when the actual blind user uses this, most of the time you're going to use it with headphones. Um, so this speaker is going to be a little bit misleading of an experience just because you can't really understand the stereo field as well. But in general, when you've got the when you've got the headphones on, you can hear a full spatial like oh here's a sound behind me or whatever. Oh, so, it's spatial audio. Oh, oh, cool. Okay. So, so step step closer to me, and you're backing up again. There we go. Okay. And. Gave feedback on the voting machine that they were proposing. Okay, now he's ready for the demo. We'll do a cut there. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Welcome to Audium. Let's explore the world together from real places to much more. Ready to learn how it works? And kind of get us ready to the map. to hear it again. It's feeling a bit quiet. Let's bring in some sounds. And the important part we're about to see here is the audio. So I'm going to press this P key to bring in the audio. Now. Playing sounds. Can you hear the world buzzing around? We're on a playground with lots to explore. Arrow keys can be used to move. Take your first step by pressing the up arrow. So, like, uh, like I said here, there's a whole audio environment around you, and as you move through it, you can, as you're interacting with it, like we're on a bridge right now. So as I step forward on that bridge, because they're, they're looking at should. You know, disabilities. I think Steve messed you up because he clicked something, so now he got you out of your demo. Oh. Uh, okay, there. We're, memory there. We're getting back in. Don't touch the keyboard, Steve. I didn't. I touched the mouse. Yeah. Check that. We're back right, into the demo. So yeah, we've got these 3D sounds around us, and now when you hit any, any of the keys, as you're walking around, you'll hear the sound of whatever surface you're stepping on. So we're on a bridge right now. So Amos Bridge, 30. Heard that footstep? The sounds change when you step on new objects. Not only that, the entire rest of the 3D audio environment around you updates. So all the other sounds, all the other angles are gonna update. That's very cool. I think we should stop the audio here because uh, it's getting a little little confusing with both sounds going. So again, we we go to audium, a u d i o m dot net, and you put in any address, and it'll look it up in Google, in OpenStreetMaps and create this for you. Yes. That's so cool. Thank All you right. Very much. So your company's called XR Navigation, and uh, is there sales to any other kind of? Corporate environments or anything you work on? We're primarily trying to partner with universities right now, um, and so we make campus maps accessible. And so if you do have, if you are work at or are a student at a university, reach out. Oh, great, great, great. We'll make sure that happens. And how would they reach out to you? We, uh, that is xrnavigation.io, and we've got a contact form right there. Perfect. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank that you. is great. A few weeks ago, physics nerd Graham explained that he's creating a series of short videos on YouTube about physics. He's got a really interesting workflow, and he's walking us through why he chose the tools he uses and how he's using them to produce these physics shorts. He started by telling us about how he chose Typora for taking his notes. And this week, he's going to tell us about two more tools that help him make quality videos. There's one more piece to the story, but you're going to have to wait to hear it next time. In addition to these great recordings, physics nerd Graham has been creating blog posts for us with screenshots and full explanations of how he's doing what he's doing. So I highly encourage you to take a look at the chapter marks in your podcatcher of choice so you get a chance to go back and see everything you need to know about how he does what he does. Now, these next two recordings were recorded separately to be standalone, but I'm going to play them back to back. So that's kind of why it's a little bit repetitive that he introduces himself twice. Physics nerd Graham here, continuing my mini-series on my mega-project creating A-level, or high school, physics videos for my students. This time is just a quickie since Alison already reviewed Audio Hijack, but I thought I'd share my setup. I decided to just do audio recording, and QuickTime Player is perfectly good for this, but since I own Audio Hijack already, I decided to use this tool since it brings a few benefits. Audio Hijack is an app that can record audio from pretty much any source and it is absolutely rock solid so I trust it not to crash 
and not drop any audio. It has an interface where you build up connections. So I create what is called a new session and drop in a block. The first one being an input device as my source of audio. Clicking on it, I get to choose my audio device, which for me is my Scarlett 6i6 USB interface for my good mic. This normally will record a stereo recording with only the left channel having audio for some reason. So I next add a block called channels, which converts the audio to mono. Next, I want to check the levels of my audio so I don't get too loud. So I add a block called peak RMS, which shows the typical bouncing lights that indicate how close I am to peak loudness. Keep it out of the red and I'll be fine. This block has a handy feature that I can pop it out into its own window and even pin that window to stay on top of all my other windows so I never lose sight of it whilst recording. Lastly, I want to save the file, so I add a recorder block. Clicking on this lets me choose the file name using variable tags such as current time, and then there's options for the folder to save to, the quality which I set to compressed Apple lossless, and some other details I don't bother with. With that session set up, Whenever I want to record, I just need to open up the app and click run. When I finish recording, I click stop. That's it. I get a great file every time without fail. Next in the series for the NoSillaCast, I'll go through how I make my audio broadcast ready using Isotope RX11. You know, I'm a huge fan of Audio Hijack, and I think Physics Nerd Graham has really explained well here how simple it is to set up some of the more simple configurations in Audio Hijack, or what they call sessions. So this is great that he's able to use this tool that has such high capability, as to, he's getting it to do just exactly what he needs it to do. All right, let's listen to his next recording. Physics Nerd Graham here, continuing my mini-series on my mega-project creating A-level, or high school physics videos for my students. Previously, I wrote and recorded my audio, so this time I'll describe how I process that audio using Isotope RX11. This is a professional-grade piece of software that I splurged on a few years ago, and just upgraded for a bargain $99. Actually, they frequently have sales, so don't buy this full price. As a quick sidebar, I paid $30, which was discounted apparently from $130, for RX7 Elements back in 2020. I liked it so much that a month later I upgraded to RX7 Standard for $99, discounted from apparently $399. In 2022, I upgraded to RX9 Standard for $99, and in 2024, I upgraded to RX11 for $99. So in total, I have paid $330 plus tax so far. And the list price for RX11 standard is $400. So don't pay more than you need to. This mini review will focus on cleaning up voice recordings and will touch the surface. I'm not an audio engineer and have no desire to be one, but I always aim for the top, hence owning a professional audio repair app. So. The goal here is to produce production level quality from my bedroom recordings. The first thing with audio and audio cleanup is to start with great audio. It should be good enough to publish without doing anything. Then we can perfect it. To that end, I have a condenser microphone plugged into a Scarlett interface that records using audio hijack. The microphone is close to my mouth, but not too close. I have a pop shield and the room is quiet hence the bedroom. Starting here, I am playing the original audio adjusted only for volume. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. He barely breathed between bites, clicking and smacking his lips as he chewed. Starting here, I'm playing the final audio adjusted with RX11 and then volume. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. He barely breathed between bites, clicking and smacking his lips as he chewed. Some might prefer the original, I like the final. So how did I get there? Well, off the bat, RX11 has an amazing dialogue isolate function, but I quickly decided that this was not for me. What it does is isolate the dialogue from the background noise. And it works really well, but it's not the best. It has one amazing trick up its sleeve though. It can run in real time. That means that if I was doing a live show, I could potentially run this module on my audio as I speak. And that's totally bonkers, but I'm recording, so I'm heading towards more power. 
Next up to bat is the Repair Assistant. This has options for voice or music focus, so I selected voice. It then has a nice obvious learn button, so I click that and it uses some machine learning to work out the best settings for my audio. I can then preview it or adjust it, click render and I get a nice clear audio file. Incredibly convenient, but not the best. It only uses a subset of the total number of modules and I feel like it leaves my voice a bit muddy and well, I just didn't like it. However, it is a superb tool and I will use it for other projects if I just want to get things done. My physics shorts are going public though and I want the best I can get. Last at the bat is doing it all manually, which sounds like a chore, but I can do chores. I knew roughly what to do, but to be sure I asked ChatGPT for a list of things to do in order. I ended up slightly different, but I now have a module chain that I can load up, run on the audio file, and a two minute audio file takes about 40 seconds to render, and it's done, almost. Let's back up a bit and walk through. So I recorded an MP4 in Audio Hijack, which I can open directly in the Isotope RX11 editor. This gives me access to the full power of the software, rather than relying on the impressive, but occasionally limited plugins. I then trim the start and end and get to work. Now, despite my pop screen, what I still get some popping from the P's and B's, possibly because my mouth is a bit close still. Opening this up gives options for sensitivity, strength, and frequency. There is also a list of presets. So I pick the one at the top of the list, gentle lav cleanup, and those three settings spring to values to do, uh, well, whatever they do. I don't understand them, but it doesn't matter as I'll explain. At the bottom of the little window are buttons for preview and bypass, along with compare, which I never use, and render. Tapping preview starts playing the file with the current settings applied. After listening for a few seconds, I stop it, select bypass, and then preview again. This time, it plays without applying the deplosive module. After a few listens, I move to the next preset, and the next, and after going through them, I get a feel for which one does the best for two equally important aspects. First, cleaning away the plosives, and second, leaving the rest of the audio unaffected. I could then make adjustments to those sliders because I now have an idea of what I like, even if I still don't understand what they do. And if I do make changes I like, I can save my own preset. When I'm happy, I click render, which applies the deplosive module to the audio file, and I can move on. Next, I look at voice denoise, and this module has two ways of working, either adaptive or not adaptive. With adaptive selected, the machine learning will keep analyzing the noise as it goes along, making the best choices. All I need to do is make sure that the options are selected to optimize for dialogue, not music, and for gentle, not surgical. That surgical setting is a great name and just means it will remove more noise, but at the expense of artifacts. I want my audio to stay true to the original, so I choose gentle. With no other settings, I click render and move on. But the other option is also good. Turning off adaptive, enables the learn button. Now, if your audio has a consistent background, this is a superb way to remove the noise. Start by selecting a section of audio that is quiet and click learn. And this lets the app know what silence should sound like. Deselecting the section, you can now click render and apply this to the file. It's a great option, but it has that learn step. And so ultimately I went with the adaptive option. Any audio I record has little clicks in it. These are usually electrical noise, but sometimes I pressed a key on the computer and that got picked up. So D-click clears these out. I repeat the process as before, using the various presets and preview to find something that works, but there's a nice twist this time. In order to remove clicks, the app needs to find clicks and isolate them. So there's an extra option on the bottom of the window to output clicks only. Selecting this does what you'd expect. When you preview now, instead of hearing your voice, you hear the clicks. Now this is great for letting you know what is being removed, helping you find that sweet spot where you're rem removing the annoying clicks, but not too aggressively. Now rather than give repetitive detail on every module, 
just assume that I'm doing the same process for each of the modules I use. Now the process is, listen to the preview, listen to the original, listen to the output clicks or whatever, repeat, adjust the settings, save my own preset, render the file. And the modules I use are deplosive, voice denoise, declick, decrackle, which is similar to declick, but different kinds of noise, voice denoise, which is a gentle denoising that removes one or two remnants of noise, mouse declick, which is set to transparent removal to catch a few lip and tongue smacking sounds, dehum for fans and aircon, breath control, which I tend to skip this because I'm far enough away from the mic, but if needed, it helps reduce inhale and exhale sounds, EQ, which is again a gentle treatment using the reduce harshness preset that, well, reduces harshness, loudness optimize, which reduces the difference between the quiet and loud sections, which can help if my voice dropped off after a confident start, and normalize as the final step, which brings the levels up to a consistent maximum loudness without clipping. That's a lot of steps, but now that I have chosen my settings and assuming I record in a similar way every time, it should all just work without me doing anything, which is where module chains come in. After spending the time going through each module in the order I want, rendering each time, I have a workflow of 11 modules. A module chain is a saved list of these modules and the settings they used. Creating a chain is simple. I click on module chain on the top right of the screen and get a new window. In the main area is a big plus button and clicking on that brings up a list of all the modules available. Select Deplosive as it is the first one in the chain and it will appear in the window with the settings currently active, which are what I just settled on. Repeat this for each module and click on the hamburger button at the top to save the new module for posterity. Now I can open my next audio file and simply click render in the module chain window to apply all of the modules in order. This may take a few minutes, but I can walk away and make a cup of coffee and I'm done. So I spent half an hour setting up my chain, but now I can get great quality audio without any work except for the scripting, editing and recording, of course. This is almost good to go, but sometimes it's not quite right. One thing is the EQ might have made my voice muddy, but in a nice touch, the history records each step in the module chain. That means I can easily undo the last couple of steps and try different EQ settings. Now this is almost great now, but I find that D-click misses things between sentences. Or maybe I hit the mic or something. Now I could go more aggressively with my settings, but then I'd risk losing quality. Instead, I listen to the file again in Isotope, watching the waveform scroll along. It's not just a waveform though. The normal waveform is there in bright blue, but behind it is a spectral map of the sound. Now this makes little sense to me, but I have learned to use it for my final step. In between sentences, there are two problems, and both are visible. There are clicks, which are shown by little blips on what should be a flat blue line between sentences, and breathing, which is shown by a small squiggly blue line if it's an inhale, but if it's just heavy breathing, the blue line barely changes, and instead, it can be seen in the orange spectral map. Whichever it is, I see it, select it, and then use the gain module set at about minus 28 decibels to quieten it down. With that all done, I can save the file as a WAV file, or AIFF, FLAC, OGG, or MP3 if I prefer. Having issued the new fancy dialogue isolate and repair assistant tools, I wonder at this point if I'm getting any benefit from spending $99 on my upgrade from RX9, but hey ho, it's a great tool and I highly recommend it if you can justify the cost. Definitely wait for an offer though. In the final segment in the series for the Nocilla cast, I'll go through how I use Keynote to create beautiful videos for YouTube. If you want to know more about what I'm doing, you can always find me with the other lovely Nocilla castaways on Slack. So head over to podfeet.com slash Slack and say hi. Over the past few years, I've heard a lot of people refer to Isotope RX, whatever version it is, and I never really got a good sense of 
exactly what it was and what it did and how it worked. I, I really love Graham's explanation here because it's clear that some of it, he's just going, I don't know, I turned this dial and it sounds better. And that's such an honest way to do a review. Clearly, he knows the parts he is explaining that he knows how they work, but that there's certain parts that are mysterious, but they still work. So he's happy. I love this review. This is fantastic. And I have heard ahead to his fifth in the final of the series, and it's just as good as the first four. I don't know what happened this week, but we have so many wonderful new and continuing supporters to thank. George from Tulsa and Philip Richardson both give very generous donations using PayPal, and Bruce Ellsworth and Tom Cooper did the same thing on Patreon for the first time. Now, I really enjoy calling out the folks who are so generous, but I want you to know that if you don't want your name associated with a donation— Just tell me. I understand people are different from me. I like to celebrate those kind of things, but a lot of people don't. So just let me know if you don't want me to announce your name. Now, a lovely Nocilla Castaway did just that this week. They didn't want to have their name called out, but they did want to donate. So they simply told me. I'm letting you know that they're out there and they're supporting us. And it's just fantastic whether they want their name read out or not. I am overwhelmed by the generosity of all of these fine folks. Well, it's that time of the week again. It's time for Chit Chat Across the Pond. This is episode number 797 for July 9th, 2024. And I'm your host, Allison Sheridan. And I am very excited to invite officially to the family, Adam Angst of Tidbits. He's now an official member of the Podfeet Podcast family as a continuing contributor to Chit Chat Across the Pond. So excited about this, Adam. This is going to be great. Woo. Do, do I get a coffee cup? I don't actually drink coffee, but I think I should get a coffee cup. <laughs> what a hat. We have hats. A hat. I could wear a hat. There you go. I'll, 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 I'll wear hats. All right. I will make sure you get a hat. They, I think they say 15 on it for my 15-year uh, anniversary, oh. and we're at 19 years, but that's okay. You're old school, right? Oh, totally. I was here 15 years ago, or <laughs> not, even four years ago. I think you were there a little <laughs> while back. Well, in this week's episode, we were going to talk about, uh, I'm hoping you'll start the story with how hyper-focused you are and why that causes you so much grief with notifications and missing things. Because I think uh, that's the uh, beginning of the story, and it was a, it's just a delightful perspective. Well, so, yeah. so this is, it doesn't happen very often, but every now and then, I'll be writing or editing and just working away happily, doing my stuff, you know, writing away, researching things, reading. And all of a sudden, I'll realize that I've been had a notification in the upper corner of my screen for some time, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, an hour, who knows? Um, And I have completely missed what it was telling me about. And, you know, notifications, like they're a dime a dozen. You see lots of them all the time. And you're looking now, you're like, what do I got? What do I got? Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and they don't, you know, you, you, know, you, 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 Apple gives us two choices, right? We've got the, the banners, like the alerts and the banners. And, you know, one of them, one of them just comes in and goes away. And the other one comes in and sticks around, but it just sticks around. It doesn't like make you do or anything. Blink. Or anything, or, or make us. I mean, it, maybe it makes a sound. I don't know. I mean, it's like uh, that. Sounds don't yeah. do it for me. Yeah. Um, and so, so I forget what exactly it was. I think it was. It might have been a, like a, an appointment, like a doctor appointment or something like that, where I was. I was mortified that I was. Oh. I was late. Um, it's okay because, when they're you know, late, but we always feel mortified when we're late, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Well, what's what's worse is when you're mortified that you're late and you get there and they're not even ready for you. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> on the other hand, yes. On the other hand, damn it. <laughs> I could have been waiting here for half an hour. So, so um, yeah. And so I, so I both wrote this big article because I was like, the problem is that we want alarms as a notification type. So there are some events, a fair number of events, in fact, where time really matters. You know, even Zoom stuff um, where, you know, hey, starts at 3.30. And so we should start at 3.30. And it, it, and even if you're only five minutes late or something like that because you got caught up doing something else, you're still, you know, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm late. You can't even blame traffic, right? You know, you got well, no excuses. And you're one of those people who appreciates things starting on time. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But this is one of the things I think we're always going to get along because I am, <laughs> I'm just vicious about pe people being late. I have yelled at my own boss for being late to a meeting. It's like, do you realize how much you're costing the company for you to leave the rest of us sitting here with nothing to do? Come on. Be on time. <laughs> it's like one of my big pet peeves. And people claim they can't be on time. Well, no, that's just wrong. You can. Just do better. You can. Just I mean, there's always things that can go wrong. They're out of your control. That's sure. not the problem. Right. It's the persistent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the, right. It's the persistent stuff. And, so what, and, when and, you say we need alarms, what do you mean by an alarm? What's an alarm different than a banner or well, a notification? Or Well, think about you set an alarm on your on your phone or your watch. It goes off until you do something. Okay. Okay. So you it's can't ignore it. So it's not just sitting on the screen. It's got to be doing something to get in your way. Precisely. Because sitting on the screen, I mean, you know, you, I mean, even if, it, and particularly like on the iPhone, like it'll notify you in your pocket, you know, you'll get a little buzz. You're like, oh, okay. I get lots of little buzzes in my pocket from my iPhone. I do not pull out my <laughs> iPhone every time I get one. Same with even the watch. But that's you know, the I best thing care. about the watch is you can go, nope, don't care. Right. Nope, don't care. Yep, Ooh, don't care. Oh, I don't care. care. <laughs> Precisely. But, you know, there's times when, when you think, oh, I, you know, I, I just like, I'm, I'm working here. Don't bug me. Um, and, and that's all fine and nice until you really should have been bugged. Yeah. And so, yes. so you don't want it on everything. No, no, absolutely not. Um, that, that, that there are plenty of things I set reminders, particularly reminders, um, where I say, I, I'll tell Siri to remind me about such and such at 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. And that's literally just to put a notification on the screen. Yes, 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 yes. I do this all the time when I'm when I'm out walking, listening to podcasts, and I want to tell the podcaster they're wrong about something. <laughs> remind me at 10 a.m. because I'm usually back in the house by 10 a.m. Remind me at 10 a.m. to tell Dave Hamilton that he was wrong about blah, blah, blah. That's That's kind of the thing I do. Or, yes. hey, I heard about a cool piece of software. I want to go download that. Remind me at, at, when I get home or at 10 a.m. Those don't need have to, an alarm. And you have to have the time in there because otherwise it just adds it to the do list and that's a kiss of death. Because yeah. you never go and look at the bottom of the to-do list, right? Right, 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 right. I mean, actually, periodically, I open reminders, like, I don't know, once every couple of months on the Mac and, and happen to see, I was like, I wonder what that was for. <laughs> like, <laughs> Oh, yeah, especially if it's been, you did it in voice. Those are always good. I, I post yeah. those to Mastodon going, so wh wh what was I trying to tell myself? But <laughs> you know what? We should really name that list Overcome by Events, you know, OBE, because it, it will be. I mean, might as well just call it what it is. I'm actually going to change my name of mine. The ones that don't have times, they're they're overcome by events. I'm never going to do them. <laughs> See, I always set a time. So mm. if I don't, it's usually like it didn't hear me right, or maybe I get okay. interrupted or something like that. And so those are the ones which I'm actually usually pretty annoyed because I then have forgotten about it for three months. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, so, so that's what I do for most stuff. But there are things... Um, tasks, both tasks and events. So, I mean, we were talking about calendar events before. So, you know, you've got a Zoom meeting you've got to get to, or a doctor's something critical or something like, like this, that. like this something recording. absolutely critical. Like I, I now know, do not leave Allison waiting. <laughs> you know, I'm going to screw up moment. next time. By the way, you just know that's going to be the day <laughs> just, I'm going to miss it. <laughs> so, uh, but but similarly with re with reminders, sometimes you set reminders for something you really really do need to do at a particular time. So like I will remind myself um, sometimes to leave for uh, um, events um, okay. because they're not really calendary things, but it's just like, oh, I need to go do that. And I, I have to do it at this amount at this time. So I'll leave myself a reminder, which is fine unless that is that, like I desperately need to leave at that time. So I'll give you an example. Um uh, you know, uh, my, Tanya is running with friends in Dryden nearby town and, you know, um, she'll be done at 730 and I'm meeting them. I need to bike there. So I'm meeting them. Mm -hmm. And so this is not something that needs like a calendar event. We actually have a calendar event, but I need to say exactly when it is I need to leave. Right. Because it will take me 90 minutes or something like that. Mm -hmm. And if I don't do that and get distracted, then I'm just not going to make it on time and it will cause all sorts of confusion for everyone else. So that's the kind of thing where a reminder is a good way of doing that. And, um, but in fact, a timer or an alarm would be a better way because those you can't miss. Right. So why don't you just set an alarm? Um, or I'm actually alarm? offended by alarms. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, the way Apple has done alarms really irritates the Jesus out of me. 
And the reason is, is because I, 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 how many alarms do you have in your iPhone? Go look. Oh, they're like 126 that all say 630 or 530, whatever. Precisely. <laughs> they're just wrong. Wrong, yeah, wrong, wrong. Stack up. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, so, why so, aren't alarms ephemeral? Unless precisely. you tell it to be, you know, persistent. So, right. So I have, I think, um, like six alarms and I only use one of them, um, which is called floating and mm-hmm. it has a name. And I, and that way I can tell Siri to change the time of floating to something. Oh, so I oh, say nice. set floating to 7 a.m. Okay. I'm a little annoyed there too, because Apple used to change the time and turn it on. Now it just changes the time and you have to turn it on <laughs> with another tap. I'm like, come on. What do you, you, you think I'm just talking to myself here exactly uh, oh wow so well so, that but, also doesn't the, tell you what that alarm is for when it goes off you have to sit there and think what no, was i only I have one to do yeah I but how do you know what it's for it's to wake up i never have any alarm oh you're talking about the else. waking one okay but i mean yeah, if we were to a, use that as a substitute oh, for yeah, this right, don't forget precisely. to leave to meet tanya so, on my bike so the, the other alarms that i have actually are um i do race directing i i direct mm-hmm big running races. And um, for one of the, uh, actually two of the races, they're very tightly time scheduled. And so I have a series of alarms that tell me to do certain things at certain times. And those have to be alarms because again, I cannot miss those times. Okay. You know, okay. this race has to start at this time. So it means that, you know, 15 minutes before I have to make, you know, make a call to get people to go outside and things like that. I can't get caught up in a conversation and it's like, oh, whoops, sorry. And now, <laughs> you know, things have gone. So any event, so, so, I only use alarms for for specific things, plus that one floating alarm is just his name for waking up. Okay. And and so if I just did alarms, which I, I kind of like the idea of doing them, I would end up with 126 like you have. Mm-hmm. And and it would it would just bug me. There's too yeah. many, they'd be completely worthless. And you know, like why why do I have all it's these the wrong tool. alarms? Right. It's the wrong tool. And so there is the, you know, like you can when you create um you know you can for each app or for different events you can type different kinds of notifications and i want one that cannot be missed persistent notifications okay and so an, an alarm type of notification would solve that or you could say okay for this one really important that you alert me at the appropriate time okay and and there's sort of, there's a couple of ways of sort of doing that in calendar. Um, I mean, you found one of them um, with having it open a file. Yeah. Well, actually, I think you suggested that. And then I thought, I thought it said it could open the calendar, which would have been good if the calendar jumped up in your face. You'd go, oh, I have a meeting coming up. But it doesn't seem to do anything if, if you just leave it at the default of calendar. And then I tried, yeah. I tried doing a shortcut to open calendar. And it opens shortcuts. Like right, I atta- the file I attached was the shortcut, the but it isn't. It wasn't you running have, the shortcut. You, if you made an automator app, yeah, that did it, that would probably work. Would all, yeah, right, because it actually has to open the file. So, so I mean, what my the example that I used was a was a uh, an audio file, which will open and start playing. Okay, and, did, and oh, that's uh, right, that's right. What was the name <laughs> of the song? <laughs> your goat is on fire <laughs> your goat is on fire and, and then which, which he sent the it to me too which completely was awesome. live up to its name but the name is so good <laughs> <laughs> right right uh, so does did that work for you no because i don't use i don't use calendar <laughs> oh <laughs> i don't like calendar at all okay i really prefer fantastic cal busy cal is also pretty good but um calendar and context i've always always bugged me in terms of I, I think they're kind of weak apps okay. um but this is one thing that that fantastic hell doesn't have is this option to to do other, to other kinds of alarms yeah okay. um and you know and i think it, it, it feels a little bit it's it's fussy too right it's not it's not exactly it's not exactly what i'm looking for what i'm looking for is for apple to just solve my problem i mean i like on. the word i like the word fussy for it like the last i always use the word fiddly like the last thing in the world you want is fiddly when you're trying to make sure you don't miss something. Precisely, precisely. It needs to be easy. So, um, so, so basically, this this started, you know, kind of the quest of surely there's something that out, is out there. Don't call me Shirley. Um, but uh, the uh, the first thing that I ran into is this this neat little Mac utility called In Your Face. Oh my god! Is, I down I downloaded it. It is in your face. That it is fabulous. <laughs> 
Yeah. You know, the, the whole concept of, you know, we should put up a, you know, something you can't miss. It takes over your entire screen yeah. and it's, it's got so many options. It lets you choose which screen to take over if you have multiple ones or it can do both of them. <laughs> you know, like there is no missing this. And actually there's probably a few things you want to use that app for once you find out about it. I, I believe, was that one of the ones that was in set app? Yes. And I've been yeah, trying to yeah. remember remember to use setup because I pay for it and don't hardly use anything in it. So I, <laughs> I'm all excited because I can download this and try it out. But yeah, that might be one where it's like, you know, I actually have to leave for the airport. Like That would right, be a good right. one to have in your face. Don't miss this one. Precisely. And, um, and, it, and you know, it, it's very good. It lets you pick calendars because, of course, you know, leaving for the airport is probably not on the calendar with, oh, I don't know, you know, birthdays or something like mm-hmm. that. Right. You know, right. you don't need to be alerted. So and so's birthday. You stop everything you're doing. Um, oh, but it does have to be an entire calendar. Yes. So you yes, almost have to have a like, particular calendar. Don't miss. Like on my calendar right. are rocket launches because for some reason, Steve invites me to those events so that he can sit in front of his, his Mac and watch rockets launch like the Ariane 6 went off this morning. Those are in my calendar. So I probably <laughs> I'd have to make a don't miss calendar. Right. Right. The, the ones that I really care about. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yes. And the same with reminders. And actually with reminders, I don't use it for any of the, any, any of the reminders lists because, in fact, those are not that important. And another, I have another app that deals with those, as I'll talk about in a minute. Um, so, but, uh, but in your face is pretty darn good. Um, you know, it's, you know, it, it does solve the problem. Um, the only issue that it, thing it doesn't do is it doesn't work if you're not at your Mac. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if right. I'm fooling around on on TikTok, laying down on my bed watching TikTok in the bedroom, it's not going to tell me that. <laughs> you are so going to miss your appointment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So uh, for the MacBound, yeah, an interesting solution. An interesting solution, and and is it certainly worth certainly worth including? Because in fact, for me, most of the time when I get caught up in doing something, it really is because I'm writing. Yeah. And and I can just zone out and not notice anything for hours. I mean, I'm one of those people who like, you know, three o'clock, crap, I should have lunch. You know, like, <laughs> I, I just forget. I, don't I, think I thought that eat. was one of the best parts about that article was getting an insight into Adam's brain <laughs> of, well, and it's, and it's why you're as productive as you are, right? Because I'm, I'm a little, I mean, I'm fairly productive, but it's a miracle that I'm as productive as I am because I'm just like ricochet rabbit looking at garbage <laughs> on my computer while I'm writing. I mean, I'm writing paper notes. I've got post-it notes. I've got reminders going. I've got to-dos in every single application. I mean, I'm just flying all over the place, but you sit down and write. <laughs> in theory, I will admit, uh, it does feel like it's gotten harder over the past, you know, five or 10 mm-hmm. years. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, but yes, when I'm, when I've actually gotten, and that's part of it's like when I have gotten focused, I don't want to be distracted. And so I'm more likely to, to, to eliminate, you know, those outside distractions. Right. Uh, but, uh, um, so yeah, so, okay. So I was like, okay, so fine. What about, what about the iPhone? Is there something for the iPhone? And this was actually recommended in by people. And they, when I wrote the first article, I was like, oh, you got to check out this app. It's called do D U E. Um, and, um, the, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's great. Well, first of all, it's only reminders. This is this is sort of my main my main problem with it is it doesn't solve the calendar problem. It only solves it for reminders. Oh, okay. And it doesn't sync with reminders. It can import from reminders, Apple's reminders. Oh. So it's its own thing. It's its own little world. But once you're in its world, which is a little bit of a funky interface world, but once you're in there, boy, does it do what it says it does. Um, which is just nag you until you say that you've done something. I think, and, by the way, I think Bart reviewed do many years ago and I tried it yeah. and, and I forget why I didn't do it, but if it doesn't work with reminders, which yeah. is where I'm, I'm reminding myself to tell Dave Hamilton that he's wrong, right? Precisely. And that's one of my big issues too, is that it doesn't, um, you know, he had the developer has 
I think three pages about how three support, separate support pages about how to get it to work with Siri. Um, you know, <laughs> the the deprecated method, um, the new method that sort of works, and then the new method that sort of sort of works in other ways. But you know, it's like, do you do Siri shortcuts? Do you do Siri Kit? You know, do you do this? And um, but part of the problem is is that the name of the app do is really a worthless word for to tell Siri. Siri oh. is never going to get that right. So even if it knew you were talking D-U-E, it would misinterpret that anyway, but it's probably hearing D-O. Yeah, precisely. And so so he has he he suggests using Siri shortcuts. And then I tried it all and it didn't, it just wasn't reliable enough. I mean, this, you know, as you say, this is the thing with reminders, is just that you can say, remind me to, you know, tell Dave Hamilton he's wrong, and poof, <laughs> it does. <laughs> Right, um, you right. Know, it, it, you know, it may hear you a little weirdly, but it's really reliable otherwise. Okay, so do is not the uh, is not the answer to life, the universe, no, and everything either. It is not. It is not. But on the other hand, you know, the people who like it, um, one of the things like people who have to take medications on very specific schedules. <gasps> okay, that's the that seems to be like the super big win. Um, you know, it's like I have to take this this medication every four hours, and I cannot delay. You know, like it's not okay to go six hours or something like that. Right, right. Um, I am, and that is a great use case. I am just terrible when it's. I mean, like my daily vitamins, I'm pretty good at that one. You know, or there's yeah. a pill I take every morning, or a pill I take every night. That's easy enough. Uh, yeah. But when it's something I don't normally take, like an antibiotic, man, you got to take those on time. You got to take, not miss any. And I'm <clears> terrible at that. I'll just go, well, I'm there in two days. That's going to work out great. Precisely. And, you know, and there are, and I gather there are other medications, which, you know, are really important, you know, heart medications or those kinds of things where you just can't miss. Yeah. And so having something like this, where it's simply not optional. You can't actually do, you know, do get away with missing it because every device is going off on you and, yeah. and will continue going off on a schedule you set. So it's like every minute, every 15 minutes, every hour, whatever you want. I, I think I mean, 15 minutes may be the shortest, um, but uh, but in this particular one, but it's, you know, it's it's definitely, you know, nag me until I, until I until I, co I acquiesce <laughs> and actually do the thing. You know, it makes me think that maybe, maybe the problem is us, you know, <laughs> because as soon as you think about it, I'm, I want this thing to nag me, I want it to tell me, <clears throat> never, ever forget, don't miss it, got to make sure I'm going to do it. And then what are we looking for? I need a way to dismiss that. <laughs> or I, I can't this, put I hardly anything anti in there. I have this anti-authoritarian bent where I don't like people to tell me what to do. <laughs> I don't even like me to tell me what to do. <laughs> And so I set these things up and after a while, I'm like, go away. <laughs> You're bugging me. <laughs> right, right. I, th I think we uh -oh. all do that. I know I've, a lot of people really hated the uh, Apple telling you to stand up every hour. Yeah. Like, Don't you be the boss of me. <laughs> <laughs> right. The hardest thing for me is remembering to stand up. I know you use a standing desk, but I, if you look at my exercise schedule, it's like you can see this huge spike first thing in the morning, and then you see no motion until I maybe go to the <laughs> kitchen for lunch, and then you see no motion until about five when I take the dog for a walk, and then there's another big spike, and then I'm on the couch. You know, so I actually need that one, and I, like I can't tell you how many days I didn't stand up twelve times. Yeah, I'm yeah, awake yeah. a lot more hours than twelve. <laughs> I, I actually, I turned that one off because it would actually yell at me for not standing up, even though I was standing the entire time. Yeah. yeah. Because when it, it does that, it's I had annoying. Sat, I had sat down. I never sat down. Right, right. Didn't um, check the change in motion. Yeah. So, so it, it really is an interesting problem. And, and I find that it's a little bit like to-dos. Like I actually am pretty good at I've, like I've really settled in this reminders thing for the, the little to dos you know that mm -hmm. I have to do this little thing I will I need to remind me to do it I will do Order it and I'm salt. done. Order <laughs> salt. Um, but like the whole task management systems, you know, getting mm -hmm. things done while you'll have projects and due dates and blah. I love those things, <laughs> and I use them for about two months. <laughs> <laughs> until it just starts to annoy me and I stop using it slowly. And then, oh, look, I used to use that thing. Here's those, that stuff I was doing two years ago. Uh, I really I really think that you like have to switch them every three months but to keep it fresh. Um, oh, maybe that's, maybe that's the trick. 
set up a schedule. I'm going to use this one for, for two months and then I get to play with a different one. Yeah. And then, yeah. but now are you allowed to leave all those tasks behind when you do the next <laughs> one? <laughs> As I said, kiss of death, put them in there. You're never going to do them. Move along. Um, yeah, no, I'm a, I, I've, I've really become a great believer in, um, you know, there's certain things just have to happen. And, mm -hmm. and yes, you know, like reminders is good for that. Um, you know, and I'll leave my stuff, I'll, I'll leave myself reminders for far in the future. You know, I have to do this on September 1st, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. I don't know, just goes away. I don't even think about it, but the whole, like working out all the little things I have to do in a project and whatnot, gets to death. You know, I don't like being, I don't like me telling me what to do. <laughs> um, and like, I can remember that. Go away. And I do remember it as it turns out. So it's never, never really a problem. Yeah. I remember years ago, David Roth, a friend of mine talking about how he finally had to stop testing, getting things done apps because that's all he was do doing. He was like on his eighth one. And he was just like, if I could just find the perfect getting things done app, then I would get things done. Um, he's on another one now. He was just showing me, uh, I can't remember the name of it, but uh, it's, I, I got really into that, but I got really into it when I was in a position where uh, my job was basically taken away from me, where I didn't have anything to do at work. Oh, note plan. That's the one he's into oh. right now. So try that one next. Um, <laughs> Hey, new, but, new kind of new fun. Yeah, I mean it integrates. It's got today's goals. You got ideas you can put in there. It's got reminders. Oh, it's got calendar. It's all built perfect. in. <laughs> two months, two months tops. <laughs> then I lose all of it. It sounds Start great. over again. Right, right. Um, um, but but I got really into doing the whole getting things done thing, and I labeled all my folders and everything. But the only reason I had the time to do any of that was because I didn't have anything I needed to get done. As soon as I got some work to do. It was just like poof, that was all down the toilet. Yep, yep, yeah. So, so I'm very, I'm, I, I, I believe in kind of the you know survival of the fittest tasks. Mm, you know, yeah. that that the the tasks that need to get done will get done. They will, and 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 everything else, you know, will happen. It, it has to compete in a certain way. You know, like if I'm sufficiently intrigued by it, I'll go and do it, even though I've got more important things to do. <laughs> Yeah, that is probably my biggest problem is I'll say, okay, Tuesday, Tuesday, it's Tuesday. I've, I've really, I got a presentation this coming Friday and I'm, I'm almost done writing it. Right. And, uh, but the one for Sunday, it's not done yet. And I, but I'll sit down and think, oh, well, you know, I really should answer Tom Merritt cause he just wrote me something funny. You know, it's just, I, let, let me, let me just clear that off the deck first, you know? And yeah, so I'm, yeah. I'm the person putting all the little pebbles into the, into the jar first and then going, oh shoot. It's seven o'clock and I haven't put the big rock into the jar yet. <laughs> Been there, done that so, so many times. You know, I have um, one idea for you for uh, notifications to make them work. Yeah. And that is to, uh, you're, you're on a 27 inch iMac, right? Yes. Change your screen resolution real low. And then the notification takes up so much of the screen that you <laughs> have to do it. So I started noticing a while ago that uh, Apple has lost its mind on being able to manage junk, uh, uh, junk spam. Mm -hmm. I got the same email the last three days in a row about enlarging something that I don't think should have gone into my inbox. And yet I wrote an email to my mother-in-law who is in my contacts. And when she replied, Apple put it into my junk folder. <laughs> So I, Dave Hamilton s suggested this. He said, just set up a reminder to check it every couple of days. Well, I, I check mine every day because it's about 75 junk mails I have to go through just in a mm. day. Well, it depends. Sundays, it's only like 15. So people sleep in on Sunday, I guess. So, but <laughs> the problem is on my 14-inch on my MacBook Pro, that reminder actually covers enough of the, the screen that I can't get to things I need to get to in the upper right of my uh, screen. And so I yeah. do it because I'm not allowed to clear that notification until I do it. So just ruin your screen resolution. <laughs> no? In other words, did, you know, get, get rid of all, you know, re remove all productivity to main, make sure that notifications are seen. <laughs> Make notifications front and center. <laughs> exactly. Well, maybe that's it. Maybe that's part of it, though. Is that's their their location too, right? It does. It does feel like if you could put them in other spots, 
Yeah. I, well, this, wait, this is horrible. Tell me, you, tell me they have to go where they have to go. You can't change the position of them. I've never thought to change the position of them. Well, How do I, make a I think it the, depends on which kind they are. Uh, let's see. No, they, always, they always come up in the upper right corner for me. No, but it's a, a, no, a notification can be a banner or whatever, right? Yeah. Um, actually, we probably go to reminders is what I'm looking for. Where are reminders? You know, they should completely redesign system settings for us. <laughs> I yeah. swear I can't find anything in here. I can't find reminders. It's in here somewhere, right? Is it under notifications? Yes, uh, be under no it yeah, is. Okay. Yeah. So none, banners, and those disappear. We don't want those. And then alerts. Show yeah, time sensitive right. alerts, show notifications on lock screen, show a notification center, badge application icon. That's not going to help. You don't keep reminders icon up on screen. Play sound for notification. I've never heard it make a sound. Mine's I on. haven't checked. I have a check too. I've never, yeah, I've never heard noticed it. the sound. Show previews. Um, Default. Always when unlocked and never. I think that's like home screen kind of stuff. Lock screen oh. kind of stuff. I never, I never, I never see that screen. So I've never seen. Yeah, those. I've never seen it. Uh, nope. And then the groupings also. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it does not look like there's any way to um, to move the notifications. Which is, I mean, I actually have two issues with that. One is um, that when I have Arc in full screen, um, I actually do sometimes leave like to leave notifications in the upper right because it's that like oh tell dave hamilton something um and i just want to leave it there until i get around to doing it okay. um okay. and uh and um and but then it, it it obscures the corner of arc where there's yeah. certain utility certain things like um in Design google items. docs and it's where the share item is okay or it's there's window controls that are up there for arc for split screen and stuff like that so it's actually kind of annoying to have those there right but, but see you'll but yes, do them because it's well, annoying to have those there. <laughs> well, the problem is, is that, yeah, the problem is I leave them, I leave them, you know, they leave those there because that's, those are the ones I'm going, oh yeah, I'm going to do that in a minute when I finish this other thing. Uh -huh. um, and now you can't finish but, the other uh, thing because it's in the uh, way. Yeah, yeah, precisely. Actually, I think if you, can't you clear them and then they go away for a couple seconds? They go for, away for some short period you, of time, I no, think. No, once you clear them, they, come, they go away forever. No, no, that's no, no, problem. I'm not saying, no, if it's a reminder notification, if you if you have to say uh, finished or done or whatever, oh if, no, you just you just close it and it goes away. You never see it no, again. Well, but I'm saying clear, so you can clear notifications and then they they come back if you haven't done them. Really? Oh, well, huh. I I'm not I I'm not I'm not aware that was a difference. Well, it depends. I think it's only for reminders because like I'm looking at I've got eight thousand Telegram message um, notifications. I can clear all. I'm sure those won't come back. Um, but reminders, I'm pretty sure they go away. Okay. Let me, I mean, they, I, I'm sure they go away and come back. I'm pretty sure. Okay. So it is four, I'm setting one for 425. <laughs> Real time. This, you, you, t you test these things. You're like, okay, I need it now. <laughs> so this is um, another reason you and I are going to do so well. And people are either going to love this or they're going to hate it. We will have no balance in our need to uh, research and know the actual answer, right? Because I, I think we're the same person in that is we'll just keep digging and digging and digging until no, there, we find there, the there truth. There needs to be an answer, right? <laughs> right, right, right. And the detail of, you know, I don't know if you've read much of what I've written, but I'll just go off into the, well, wait a minute, now I need to understand the math of how the battery curve works on lithium ion batteries. And I'll take you to battery university. And all you wanted to know was, can I charge my Mac with this battery? <laughs> you may have more more math and engineering background than I do, but yes. But in, that in, level in, of in research till yep. you know the answer. Like, do you know yes. that this doesn't exist? You know, I've, right. I've exhausted Precisely. this to a certain point. So well, part of it is I don't like being told that I'm wrong. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. I, I'm getting better at that. I am getting better the, uh, at that one. The uh, telling people they're wrong. Pra practice. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm real. I've never had trouble with that. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, so I did just learn about another iPhone app, um, which looks like it does, it might be sort of the, all, the iPhone version of in your face. Oh, it's called, it called? Cal alarm. Cal I haven't written alarm. about this yet. I've just, okay. just started trying it okay. and, um, and it has a, you know, nag me every minute 
kind of you know you can set the the, the time time period, but you nag me every minute until I uh, go do the event. Okay, so my task will come up. It says, "Time sensitive. Remind me about something. I, I cannot move it. Is there I can, a clear I can slide it away. To hover? If I, I have options, I have snooze or complete task. But if well, you of, if you exit no away, if I exit away, it without, will not come back. I think it will because if you haven't said completed. I think it comes nope. back. Well, might some future time, long, yeah. in the distant future. I don't know when. I think it'll come back soon because I do that okay. sometimes to make get it out of my face, and it's like shoot, it came back. Okay, we'll see because I don't, well, I'm not so sure about that. But <laughs> all right. Uh, so anyway, so yeah, so Cal Alarm um, looks like it uh, it does the iPhone side of things, but uh, but interestingly, they don't have a Mac app. <laughs> so, and, um, and so it does sync with calendar. So you, your calendar stuff. So it'll pick that up, but it looks like you have to, um, it has a default nag. Um, and like, I don't want to be nagged about every event on my calendar. Oh yeah. Um, but I, it looks like you would have to change the nag setting for each event manually which you'd have to do on the iphone which isn't often where i'm creating the events um so yeah we'll see i mean it's it, it's actually not a terrible little iphone calendar app um okay. you know it's a slightly different interface to uh to that and i said i haven't written about this but i've been using it long enough but it does it does look like it may be the the combination um for in your face uh with uh, on the mac uh, so and so it, yeah, maybe I will if say you had, it does it does nag heavily. So <laughs> like, okay, go away. <laughs> yeah, I think that all of these are probably going to get back to you needing to create a, a calendar that is a you know yeah. don't miss this is the name of the calendar. Or, you know, you really have to do this one. <laughs> yeah, and the problem with that, of course, is on probably the same thing is I have a, I share calendars with Tanya. Okay, and so you know. Some there are probably some things that she would put on a calendar that I can't miss, and there are probably you know, and so like I, I don't know that it would necessarily work for uh, for the for all of that, but we, I will have to see. Yeah, uh, Steve and I for some reason have never embraced shared calendars, but we, what we do instead is we invite each other to our events. So you might notice that chit chat across the pond, Steve Sheridan was invited. He is not going to show up unless I actually tell him he's allowed to come. But it's so that he knows that I'm busy at that time. <laughs> Oh, interesting! But I've it's never done I've never done weird. invitations much because I found I found the the workflow for them entirely inscrutable and and fragile <laughs> and fragile and just yeah. just like well, and partly because I you know not being an office person, right? Mm -hmm. Like I, I you know it's not like oh I'm having this event in conference room C and I need to invite Joe and Sally and Sam, mm -hmm. you know that that makes sense. You know I don't you know my my events are you know I don't. Only a person. Only a person when I'm talking to someone, and then I'm like, that sort of feels weird to invite them to an event rather than just like I'm talking to them in email or on the phone already to set the event up. Right. So, right. So. Uh, so yeah. So I and I mean I think I actually feel like it's gotten more reliable. In the past, it got it was utterly confusing as to like whether or not you had accepted, and if you had accepted, how you could de-accept if something changed or. You I know. haven't had much trouble with it as long as the other person is on iOS. And the address they gave me, uh, or, or you know, Mac OS in the Apple ecosystem, but gave me a an Apple ID to share with them. As soon uh, as it's Gmail, it's at about a thirty seven percent success rate. Maybe that's the problem. Is that yeah. I, you know, I've had it enough randomly where I don't know what they're using, and I I put something in, and all you know, just who knows what happens. So, all right. Uh, well, hey, but, it, uh, it sounds like you're still on the quest. I'm and, still on the uh, quest. I haven't gotten that notification again. Just saying, you know, we're we're <laughs> we're four minutes in. We'll see if it comes back in five minutes. But we'll see. Oh yeah. Now we have to we have to vamp for at least one more minute to make sure that we don't <laughs> whether we see that one come out. Well, if uh, um, I'll put it know, in the I show look, notes if you do succeed. <laughs> yeah, it, right. It's, I, mean, I mean, what's sort of annoying about this is it feels like it feels like this is this is you know there, this is a solvable problem. Obviously, like yeah. in your face and Cal Alarm and do have all solved it in various ways. And the question is, am I being weird and like in the sense of like, oh, I need a third party app to do this, or or am I correct in that this is a general desire um that lots of people would appreciate and are never gonna go find a third party app for? 
And so if there was an alarm type of notification that you could that you could you know, I mean right now it's all, it's it's app specific right you know notify all reminders use the same one um, but if you could set, specify oh this is the kind of reminder I want to get for this uh, the alert kind of alert I want to get for this this particular reminder this particular event would people appreciate that is that something that Apple should add wait we should we say you should should we you should before say we should? got on the air we talked about not using the word should. <laughs> Apple should could add if they cared about us. Yeah, but no. Yeah, that's a good that's a good question. I I don't know that I necessarily needed except for those times that I absolutely needed it. Right. You know, there have been right. those times just like total brain fart, missed it, lost it. Yeah. But they're uncommon for me. But when it happens, oh my gosh, why didn't Apple give me a way to do that? Right. And 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 you and I are time specific people there's lots mm -hmm. of people who are really not yeah. and do they care maybe they don't care maybe they're just totally cool with being late for everything in sight um and it just doesn't bother them i remember so my brother telling me he called a friend of his and said uh hey you want to go to the mall on tuesday she said okay and he hung up <laughs> <laughs> they didn't say which mall <laughs> they didn't say what time they said tuesday which tuesday I it mean, worked you know. out they found each other <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm not that person. Uh, yeah, so so I don't know. I mean, it does feel like one of those slightly Type A personality things. But but you know, I, I I don't know. It feels to me like Apple could add that, and it would be appreciated by a non-trivial subset of the population. On the other hand, it's not like Apple puts a lot of attention into calendars and reminders these days, right? Well, those are both they're... mature apps that don't get a lot of attention. In iOS 18 and, and Sequoia, aren't we supposed to be getting a new integrated reminders will be inside calendar thing? I think there is something with reminders will show up inside calendars. Yeah. Um, which, of course, like Fantastic Cal and Busy Cal have had for a while. Like 1978, um, I think they yeah. put those features in. <laughs> right. Yeah, of course, of course they could. Um, so, like, so, so, yeah, it does. I mean, yes, Apple's paying a little bit of attention, but it doesn't feel like they're putting in they're not they're not they're not they're not focusing hard on it shall yeah. we say <laughs> and maybe it's just one of those things it's the quote-unquote third-party opportunity you know yeah and that's good you know so that's good, right? you know um and you know you get in your face you get cal alarm you get do you're gonna be you're gonna be solid right except but yeah we need in your face do and this new one cal alarm we put all three of yeah. those on our phones uh, on our devices we should show up Right. <laughs> right up until we say, you're not the boss of me, and we turn them off. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, Adam, uh, we, uh, of course, everybody can find you at tidbits.com. And if you do have comments on this, this will, of course, be a blog post. And if you've just listened to it from the blog, you'll know to leave a comment and say, is Adam nuts or on this particular topic or is well, this yes, something you want? <laughs> I, can, I can be nuts and right. There's two, there's not, they're not mutually exclusive. <laughs> For sure. That's great. So uh, make comments, <laughs> make comments on the blog post and let us know what you think. All right. Thanks, Adam. We will see you uh, probably in about a month, I think, right? Uh, we will. And I will let you know if that reminder ever comes back. It, it hasn't yet. So just <laughs> okay. Saying. I'm going to have to run my own test now too, to prove what I thought I knew. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, Adam. All right. Take it easy. Well, how fun is Adam? I just love talking to that guy. Anyway, uh, for the record, that notification never did come back for Adam. And later that same day, I was supposed to turn on the oven and I had a reminder pop up and I didn't notice it and forgot to turn on the oven. So it is a real problem. The struggle is real. Well, that is going to wind us up for this week. Did you know you can email me at allison at anytime you like? If you have a question or a suggestion, just send it on over. Remember, everything good starts with podfeed.com. You can follow me on Mastodon at podfeed.com slash Mastodon. And if you want to listen to the podcast on YouTube, you can go to podfeed.com slash YouTube. If you want to join in the conversation and talk to people like physics nerd Graham, you can join our Slack community at podfeed.com slash Slack, where you can talk to me and all of the other lovely Nocilla castaways. You can support the show at podfeed.com slash Patreon or with a one-time donation at podfeed.com slash PayPal. Be a hero like George, Philip, Bruce, Tom, and anonymous. And if you want to join in the fun of the live show, head on over to podfeed.com slash live on Sunday nights at 5 p.m. Pacific time and join the friendly and enthusiastic Nocilla Castaways. Thanks for listening and stay subscribed.